Celebration across the nation. Joseph Jaffe is not famous. I'm kind of famous. I'm Jerry Springer. And Jaffe is no host. He'd be lucky to be in my audience, let alone on my show. Well, maybe he's crazy enough to be on my show. I take that back. And that's not a good thing. A spring in your step, there is a twinkle in your eye. I, I, I can I can throw a rhyme down for you real quick. Yes, they call me Thrill. They say that I'm the man. You disagree? How could you? Let me make you understand. Should we bring her on the show? Can anybody find me? And there she is, fresh as some bread, put right in from the oven. When you feel rejected, you get some like a loving. She looks wonderful. Mom looks amazing. Somebody too. Okay, Mom, bugger off now. I've got to show it to you. No. Like that? Joseph Jaffe, ladies and gentlemen. You just made the new intro of the show. <laughs> This is this is gonna get 10 out of 10 on the room radar spectrum. I am back on location in the house that I grew up in, on, under. I am uh, in the same dining room where you saw those little clips of uh, Mother Senior, who is actually next to me in the uh, in the other room. She's probably watching along. Uh, maybe commenting on the hair, the hairline, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe she doesn't like the view. There's some orchids, uh, there's some Asian oriental uh, items which we will be putting on eBay soon. Maybe Marsha Collier will help us sell them for a beautiful profit. You never know, you never know. I am uh, super excited because StreamYard, shout out to StreamYard, they have done something pretty cool, I think, which is the first time I can actually import my music. So there's no Roadcaster at all. No Roadcaster mixing board, no microphone. I'm using the built-in microphone in my MacBook Pro. I'm using the built-in camera on my MacBook Pro. Pretty much the only accessory that I'm using is this, my little earpiece. Um, although I probably could unplug it as well. I think it's really important for you to see how to do this, how this is done. You know, my new keynote, maybe my new book, maybe, maybe uh, I don't know, maybe it will be a haiku, will be how I reinvented myself during the global pandemic. And you can too, you can do this. You can be on camera, your voice, your face. I mean, it can't be uglier than mine, right? But you can actually create your own brand, your own consistency. You can do this. And you know what I also learned is take it off the loop. See, we learn things all the time. So no more, no more music. We can make mistakes. We're allowed to make mistakes. We can forgive ourselves as well if we don't take ourselves too seriously. In fact, you know, I heard this amazing thing the other day, which is a boat, a ship. It exists, it, it, it lives surrounded by water, water all around it. In fact, an ocean, sometimes a swelling ocean, a turbulent ocean, the water is all around it. But when the water gets into it, only a fraction of that water, the boat sinks. And that analogy, of course, is, is life. And all the problems and challenges 
and anxiety inducing moments in our life. That is the water around us. But if we allow it to get inside us, it will sink us. And I think that's where we have to be able to detach, externalize, sometimes internalize. But remember, if we take in too much water, we will surely sink. Now, I want to talk a little bit today. Um, I've normally used the opportunity to talk about Alpha Collective, to talk about how I've uh, NFT'd myself, um, how I've decided to turn my nose up against all forms of consulting. No more consulting, no more speaking. I'm done. All of those traditional methods are no longer going to apply. This article came out this week called The Second Coming of Joe Jaffe. And of course, I immediately said to Joe Mandisi, you know what would be a better title? The Second Life of Joe Jaffe. A little hat tip, a little, uh, a little nod to Second Life and 15 years ago. Um, and, and, it's a, and it's an amazing article, uh, including George Parker saying, I have no idea what that bullshit was all about. If you can explain it to me, send me a basket of NFTs and Digicoins. I will promote you on Web4. Like only I would, you know, I immediately responded to him. I said, George, you old dog, you need to come on my show. Um, the article ends with during a series of Zoom-based interviews with Jaffe. By the way, he didn't tell me he was using that ridiculously scruffy image of me. He repeated how everything he has done has led up to Alpha Collective and how it is his biggest idea. I remind him that he has said the same thing about most of the previous projects I've interviewed him on in the past. And I was right almost every time, he says, then corrects himself, maybe every time. It's true. I've been right almost every time, maybe every time. I think this time my intent is to do something about it. But the reason why I show this to you, where I talk about turning, you know, uh, deciding to not do any more consulting, I'm no longer the procurement, go away. You can never, ever touch me or harm me. Again, I'm done. I'm done with you. Um, the only way to transact with me is through NFTs. And it's actually what I want to talk to you about today with respect to my seated soliloquy. The, the seated soliloquy is, is called Brave. And the reason why it's called Brave is because when people started to see this, I just wrote a LinkedIn article um, where I basically talk about how I've NFT'd myself. The thing that people started saying was, that's brave of you. Brave. And I thought to myself, I don't know, is it? What is brave? A a am I brave because I'm doing something different? Am I brave because I care to change? Because I dare to change? Is, is that bravery? Or is that common sense? What does it take to change? Is it really courage? Or is it belief? Belief in yourself. Belief in the fact that if we don't change, if we aren't forever changed, we'll be on the losing side. We'll be on the wrong side of history. It's like a risk. Is it a calculated risk? Is it an educated risk? Is it a relative risk? What may be risky to me may not be risky to you. And what is risky to you may not be risky to me. At the end of the day, I don't think there's anything brave about saying, I am forever changed. I will never consult anymore. I will never compete in the same pool that everyone is fighting for those scraps during tough times. When they zig, I'm gonna zag. And then I'm gonna zag again, and then I'm gonna zag again. And in fact, when I zag, then I will zig to my zag. I don't find that brave at all. I find it exhilarating. I find that it gives me life. It gives me purpose. To close one door is to open another door. To end one chapter in your life is to begin a new chapter. And when you end one book, you start a new one. I don't think that's brave at all. I think it is the most empowering, fueling, enriching, energizing moment. And I wish it on you and I wish it for you. And whether you call it brave, courageous, dumb, stupid, insane, mad, 
just remember, those that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are often the ones that do. And now, speaking of which, it's time to bring on another maverick who is certainly changing the world in her own unique way. And before I do that, just to look at a few comments, my mom is watching. Well, she better, otherwise I'm gonna go next door and say, why aren't you watching me? And Glenn is here. He says, no way, Jaffe is back. Did I ever leave? I just took a break. Did you miss me? That's the real question. I'm glad you're here, Glenn. And as you know, every single episode of the show, I give away some Jaffe coin. And uh, I'm leveling up today. One, 10 times what I normally give away. One full whole Jaffe coin. $6 of goodness comes your way by using that QR code. And remember, the only way to get that code is to have 10 Jaffe coin or to have the fan roll in my Discord. Is that brave? I don't know. Being able to say you've got to have coin to get coin, you've got to be part of my community. I'm not sure that's brave at all. I think it's common sense and maybe even good business sense. And I missed you too. Well, now it's time to bring on Marsha. And, you know, some people are just so goddamn famous that they don't need words to introduce themselves, they have video, they have a sizzle reel. But some people are so amazing that they have what's called OG sizzle reel. So this is three minutes and 21 seconds. I may not show you all of it, um, but you will certainly enjoy most of it. Here is Marsha Collier. Um, Marsha began her iCitizen journey by becoming familiar with eBay and selling goods uh, off of eBay in 1996 and has grown to be the world's foremost authority about buying and selling products on eBay. Marsha has now become an integral part of the eBay business and culture. She teaches at eBay University, she speaks at their annual conference, she has written the book eBay for Dummies and is widely known within a number of circles. She was sharing with me this morning that um, she's been a little overwhelmed with uh, her realization at how many people are actually following her. And we've been following Marsha for several years and um, are just delighted that she's here. So here to uh, share with us her journey in the, uh, in the world of being an iCitizen, please welcome Marsha Collier. So the first media interview I did was live with Matt Lauer. I was so scared. I have the video of it and I'm going like this. Uh, coming up in a moment, what's, what's coming up here now, Marsha? Oh, we're going to have the Style File, Jewelers to the Stars. Yes, what Ad else? Adopt a Pet. Yes. And Alfred Molina is going to be right here. How can you get this down? We have people on the show after five years can't do that. I'm kind of a gateway drug to the Internet. <laughs> you know, because everybody hears about eBay. Oh, I'm going to go make money. But they have to know how, so they'll buy eBay for dummies. We've been listing some things on eBay this morning. As yes. a matter of fact, this lovely dress, yes. Jessica's dress, Sam brought in devastating. Yeah. a rowing machine. <laughs> and it was kind of big. I couldn't put it in a little box to ship off. And that's why I wrote eBay for dummies. Uh, no offense. Sure. So <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm so upset you got a Chia Pet set and I didn't. You see, there's a gift for everybody. There is. There is. The and Singapore he, government had me speak at an internet conference there to empower the people of Singapore to sell on the internet. And what I found when I met people out there is we're all the same. Because when I moved to Singapore, I had to unload all of my winter clothing. I made some handsome profits. But the biggest problem that I faced with eBay, non-paying buyers. What to do with that? I knew you'd spring something like this on me. <laughs> but the bottom line is you have to be in your listings. Be clear that you will file with eBay mm -hmm. and report them if they are non-paying buyers. Mm -hmm. Because eBay doesn't take that very lightly. You could take the word eBay off the title of my books. Because really, 80% of it 
is web-related and business-related. It's not about eBay. It's all about customer service. No. Oh, hold on, there's a secret? No, there, okay, hold on, wait. There What's is the no secret. Okay. The bottom line okay. is, if you want to make money on uh -huh. eBay, you have to work. Oh, see? Marsha Collier, welcome to the show. I, I, I played the whole thing. I was enamored. I, I know. I, I, I actually, it's so wonderful. I really enjoy that video. You know, I have been in tech for so long. I mean, eBay started, I wrote my first book on eBay in 98. But I can take you back where I danced with Bill Gates at Comdex. And um, Steve Jobs tried to sell me a Next computer personally and demoed it all out. And I remember thinking to myself, you want how much for this computer? <laughs> That does what? Um, Vint Cerf and I have spent time and we've been discussing the future of Web3. I mean, I know all these people, the PayPal mafia. I was there with them, helping them start. I consulted on so many businesses, which are big businesses today. And hey, luckily I took shares from a few of those. So well, that was thank good. Well, thank thank you for letting me giving me some of those shares. You know, <laughs> where were you all my life, um, Marsha? There's so many things to talk about. Let's start off with this idea of what I was we were discussing in the green room, uh, the concept of the silver-haired pioneers or the silver-haired revolutionaries. I am of the opinion that the people that will lead this rev this Web three revolution will be the silver-haired. Uh, you have to, I, I, I got them. They're there. They're, they're not showing up in this line. But, but I actually believe that we, that were here before the web, forget about web one, web two, web three, that, that are here now are the ones that actually have enough knowledge of how new things take shape and how people resist change and how people push back and how long it takes to adopt, but also the experience of what has worked and what hasn't worked in the past. And it's it's a it's a reverse ageism absolutely. point now. Yeah, well, what absolutely. Do you, what do you think? Do you agree with that? Well, Joseph, let me ask you: What was your first computer? My first computer was a ZX Spectrum. That was at the same time as the BBC and the Commodore sixty four. Uh, that was before the IBM compatible, they called it, and uh, and my Apple two E. So right there at the end, the ZX Spectrum. I had a K Pro two where you'd have to load the operating system on a five and a quarter floppy disk. It, it, you know, watching the evolution from the green phosphor screen to the IBM PC, which of course was ch life changing for everybody and the Apple products and everything. Yes, absolutely. There is so much knowledge from learning the mistakes of the past. I mean, I've spent my career and I've been morphing my career. As you said in the introduction, I'm in another change right now of what I'm doing. I'm no longer gonna travel the world and discuss tech with people because frankly, um, you have to learn the facts. And unfortunately today, a lot of people are skimming through the facts and jumping right to conclusions. Um, I'm hoping everybody listening today if you're going to talk about something or if you're going to learn about something, you learn from people who legitimately research this thing. I could have told, no, I could, not only could I have, but years ago, I talked about the truth about 5G. Every, oh, Marsha, you should, you, some, something's wrong with you. This, this is going to save, no. 5G has its limitations and it has its incredible strengths. But you can't look at every new thing and think it's going to be your savior. The world changes. You have to change. You have to change the way you look at things. The one thing I've started to do is I'm writing more books. I've written over 55. And wow. What? I said, wow. That's, you know, <laughs> 50 more than me. I've really got catching up to do. Well, I've sold over 2 million. And it, I love it. And I write them. And people say, when I write, it's like talking to somebody across a kitchen table, which is yeah. my goal. 
because you can give technology. My audience, different from yours, jo uh, Joseph, is that we try to educate, I won't say the uneducated, but the unaware, those who don't know. I mean, seriously, you mentioned Ethereum to some people in there. They may know, They oh, this book? Let me tell you a little story. So oh, and, and, and by the way, by the way, talk about talk about specificity, right? It's Android smartphones for seniors for dummies. So it's not just phones for dummies. It's Android smartphones for dummies and for seniors. I mean, you know, who said that focusing and, and niching doesn't make a lot of sense? Well, interestingly, world the book is sold worldwide. And worldwide, 70% of the phones are Android phones. And it happens to be the top selling book on Android in the US. But the point is, like in my pinned tweet on Twitter, it's not just for seniors. It's the kind of book that teaches just the basics. And people often just skip over the basics and dive into the heavy. As a matter of fact, Joseph, I'm sure you use an iPhone. Do you know how to do everything on your iPhone? I certainly do not. Well, with each change of operating system, new features come up on all phones and the basics change a bit too. And the basics are what you really need to get the best performance from your devices or the internet or the technology, whatever strength you want to learn. So it's always important to go back to the basics every once in a while. Uh, people who aren't seniors are the biggest buyers of this book because that's what it does. I get email from people all the time. I didn't know my keyboard could do that. Oh, my goodness. You read the reviews on Amazon. It's hysterical. But that's my goal is and I want to bring technology to the people, not the upper crust of technology. No, I was going to say, you know, the thing that's so interesting to me is that these days you pick up all these hacks uh, on TikTok, right? You know, five things you didn't know about your iPhone, part 55, boom, 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 boom. Look at all the things popping up. And then we forget that there are these things called books and not only books, but this. I mean, it's actually quite genius, the whole concept of dummies that we were able to like in Web3, of course, there's this term normies. And and I love it. I love leaning into that because we're all normies of everything, but at in different something. degrees. Right. At right. Something we are, you know, when it comes to cooking, hey, I'm a normie. I definitely need help with that. But the point is, we have to be open to learn. Well, nothing that's basic. We can't be too good enough to learn. And by having a book that's well indexed, that answers questions, you could just refer to it whenever you need it. You don't have to sit down and read a book from cover to cover anymore. Uh, videos are great, but it's been proven that written word on paper absorbs into your brain much better. The learning curve is massive versus watching video. I, I have to say that um, you articulated that so uh, wonderfully, this idea of being open to learn and 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 that is branding right that's the essence of branding of how a negative or a weakness perceived or otherwise can actually be positioned or portrayed or, or it's just perspective <laughs> right so the glass is half full or half empty the water level is the same level it just depends on how you see it and so normies is almost this this humbling this humble admission which is i still have something to learn and that, to me, is very empowering. Well, we all have something to learn, whether it's in life or have you talked to a Zoomer lately? You know, I, I'm needing a translator and I'm working, uh, talking to Zoomers and learning everything I can because I respect them. I respect their point of view in the world. I subscribe to their sub stacks, the ones that can write. And because I only like good writing, but this is, I, I can't, I can't deal with bad writing and the internet is so full of that, but there is good writing on the internet. And by learning about other people's point of views in different demographics, and remember 
A demographic is no longer numbers. It's a psychographic. It's what the people do, where they live, what's important to them, what they're feeling, what their interests are. Nobody can tell me that you can't take a boomer who may have the exact same desires and wants as a Gen Z because they exist. And you have to look for that and make your audience a big circle. But I think I, to intersect. I think when you refer to Zoomers, I was I was just thinking to myself, wait, is Zoomers someone who spends a lot of time on on web conferencing calls or uh... Gen Z? No, I know, I know. No, but I was, sure. suddenly, I, I was, I was, I was suddenly thinking maybe we need to we need to reposition the Zoomer uh, word, or maybe maybe we need to zoom a little bit less. But Marsha, everyone thinks they know you. They they can Google you. They've looked at your impressive bio. But do they really know uh, the real facts about you? The the deep dark secrets that we dig up through our uh, private eye on our guests. For example, uh, you were proposed to on Twitter and married on Vine. Um, now, there are probably young'uns watching that don't even know what Vine is. Um, <laughs> but I mean, you you like me, we walk our talk, don't we? And so tell us about being proposed oh, to way, on Twitter I and married wore, on Vine. I wore Google glasses at the wedding. <laughs> you were? So, I mean, I, I was the first person to be married with Google Glass. Um, my husband proposed to me during a Twitter chat and he had texted a message to a whole bunch of people to let them know because it was the customer service chat that I do on Twitter every Tuesday night can get very busy and a lot of people talk at once. So I didn't see his proposal right away and people started to retweet it. And by the way, if you're into customer service and you really think what drives business as I do is the customer experience. Please join us every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. I know you'll love it. We have some great comments, great people. Sometimes we have a little light crowd, but sometimes we have a lot. But anyway, so he proposed to me on there, which was kind of shocking. Um, he used a Macy's gift box for the ring, which he held up in a short Vine video. You can see it some places on the internet because it was downloaded before Vine shuttered. And uh, it was kind of amazing because we had every news media here at the house. It, my wedding was covered by Cosmopolitan, Huffington Post, People Magazine, um, everything. Uh, everything, it was a big deal. And that was fun. The, but I lived my truth. And my truth is technology. And I believe in it. You know, living one's living one's truth is not. It sounds so again commonsensical, uh, but how many people actually can do that? And and by the way, and I think you'll take this in in the most positive light as well. You were proposed to Twitter married on Vine. Just make sure that you are not divorced in the metaverse. That's all I'm saying. No, God forbid. No, God forbid. Well, we did get married in a regular ceremony, but then we did the Vine. Also, you know, do you take this woman? I do. Do you take this man? I do. You are now. So we did a short vine after the actual ceremony. So it was kind of a, but it's amazing. Social media can be great. It is kind of a swamp right now. And we could talk about that at length too, but it's important to be able to go online like we feel an earthquake here in California. Is it an earthquake? I don't know. If it's at night, the radio stations aren't going to tell you. I just go on Twitter, type in earthquake in search, and I can see if it's happened, where it's happened, what the government has said about it, and what links to go to for more information. That's the power. The strength of social media is communication, socialization, because let's face it, our socialization right now kind of blows. <laughs> yeah, no, look, we are stuck at home. Look, I, I feel that this is a good, good enough as any segue to talk about the debacle um, of uh, Elon Musk's Twitter takeover. Because I, I've said this, I'm on record, I've written this, that I said Twitter should be acquired by the United Nations because Twitter is a public service. It is the global town square. 
And the problem, of course, is that it got infiltrated and, and perceived and positioned as a media platform or outlet. And so everyone felt the need to monetize and all these disgusting words. But, but I couldn't agree with you more when we think about the real role and, and the benefit of social media. And then comes along Elon Musk, who, uh, you know, I mean, it was, it was Trumpian by design, even though today Donald Trump turned on Elon Musk, surprise, surprise. But, but, but it was always just, I, I don't know, I actually said a worm has crawled into Elon Musk's head and is rotting his brain. What was he thinking? I okay. want to hear your perspective. My perspective is really different. So here you go. I knew Elon back in the day, x.com. Okay, he has been possessed for success. He is brilliant. He's a genius. He also has a little crazy, but who, Joseph? No offense, you too, and me. We all have our crazy. Um, it's just uh, when you're crazy as a billionaire, you can be a much bigger disruptor. And honestly, I'm on Twitter. I love Twitter. I know that there's an algorithm. I know that even if you adjust your stream to see only tweets as they come along, you're not still going to see everything. I've done tests. I've looked at the metrics. I've done real work on this. And I believe everybody's voice should be there, which is why the hashtag searches and the word searches are so important if you're looking up a topic. Because then you can see everybody and a lot of times a topic will be weighed down by negativity or po I would love it to be positivity, but negativity and there'll be points of view that you don't want to see. If they're really offensive to you, you know, there's a mute command on Twitter. You can mute that person forever. You don't have to block them, which is really strange because Will Wheaton in Star Trek, I have a long history with Star Trek. I used to sell on eBay for the original crew. And yeah, love Star Trek. But Will Wheaton blocked me. And I'd never talked to Will Wheaton on Twitter. And I thought that was awfully strange. But do know that if you block someone, they can know that you block them. And that can just bring up all kinds. Yes, I am. I am such a nerd. I have every action figure ever made. It was featured on the Sci-Fi Channel years ago. Um, on the wall. Hey, just, just, just a, uh, ADHD kind of like creeping into me. But uh, which Star Trek? I'm also a Star Trek nerd. I've uh, been watching now Picard and and I haven't watched the new one, New Worlds, and I'm watching Discovery. Are you enjoying all these spin-offs and all these new Star Treks or are you a purist? I mean, I'm a Jean-Luc Picard fan through and through. Now I'm not so much a Wesley Crusher fan because he blocked you. Uh, but what, what's what, what's your favorite series? Are you kind of uh, old my, god my or new favorite, god? My favorite is Next Generation, DS9, Deep Space Nine. That doesn't get the what it deserves. What a great series of inclusion and people. They're all living on a space ship, a space station, but it's huge. And it has, I, I had spoken to the Okudas who did the design for the area. And I made a couple of suggestions, which I was pleased showed up in the next season. By the way, I have a William Shatner story for you. So back in the day, I said to Bill um, at, at one of the events I was at, I said, Bill, you know, you have so much stuff. Why don't you let me sell it on Twitter? We can sell on, on eBay. We can sell it to uh, benefit your charities. And quote, William Shatner said to me, and I'll swear on a stack of Bibles, nobody's ever going to make any money off the internet. Rubbish. <laughs> How right he was. Exactly. I'm William Shatner. I've done a lot of things in my career, but this takes the cake. This is so cool. You, Joseph, today, it's all about you. You won the internet. Congratulations. That's I'm sorry, really couldn't, great couldn't resist. See, my problem is I knew these people so far long ago that we didn't even have cameras. <laughs> um, and Scotty, James Doohan, yeah. what a wonderful human being. 
um, I knew him very well. And, and George Takei, I knew back in the day. I don't think he'd remember unless I showed him. We do have pictures of each other, but they look so 80s that I, I couldn't post them. And, and, and by the way, Brent Spiner, Data, is uh, he he's 71 or 72 years old. When did that happen? No, oh, wait a minute. Um, so many people. I saw an interview with Kent, Henry Kissinger. You were talking about the UN. He was so spot on. He was slow, slow speaking. Man is 99 years old and had so much wisdom that was unbelievable. Um, again, going back to what you're saying about all ages, the gray factor, mm. that we need to listen. Sometimes it's painful. I, I get you because it was painful to me. But if I had listened earlier in my life, maybe I would have had a better direction, perhaps, or maybe I would have been more targeted in a certain area. But now I'm doing what I love. I'm writing books and I hope to be selling more on eBay again, because I think that's so much fun. I got all that Star Trek crap to get rid to get rid of. If, so if I had listened <laughs> earlier in my life, <clears throat> there's something there's something very powerful about that and maybe us silver heads, we can communicate that back to say, or to our, <clears throat> to the next generation, to basically say, listen more, you know, demonstrate more of that humility, slow down. You know, it's funny because when I, I remember, you know, I remember, um, and um, oh Lord, uh, what was his first name? His last name, ironically, was Jaffe. I'm Jaffe. And, uh, and he's passed away since, and he met me in Starbucks, and I pitched him on all my ideas and this, and I want to write a book, and I, I want to call it Life After the 30 Seconds Spot, and, and, and he said, he looked at me, and he said, slow down, Sonny. He said, Sonny. He said, slow down, Sonny. You're moving too fast. You'll write your book one day, but not now. You're not ready. And of course, I didn't listen to him. I wrote the book, and the rest is history, but how do we as the silver heads now tell the younger generation to slow down without them feeling like they're being patronized and how much more successful might that book have been had you waited just a little we see now 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 that's not fair because now you've just shown your wisdom but you see the thing is when i was growing up yeah yeah uh, i could grow up to be an astronaut i could grow up to be a nurse i could grow up to be a doctor but nobody told me how, and nobody certainly told me that I could grow up to be a plumber and work three hours a day and make buckets of money <laughs> or be an electrician or have a trade. I was never given those options. There was one option. I was going to go to college and I was going to, I wanted to be a writer. So that's what I did. But I always wonder, I didn't know the options and to offer more options. And uh, honest truth, passive income, yeah, it's grand. But real income, real money ain't passive. You have to work for it. You really have to put forth the effort, even if it's just in the learning, to learn to be the best at what you're doing. Because it's easy to be a quick flash in the pan, make a bucket of money and run. But if you want to keep that money, if you want to grow with your market and grow with the internet and technology, you've got to learn all through your life. Yeah. I mean, I think if I had to synthesize that, what we're realizing now, of course, you know, uh, the concept of, I mean, I, I was, uh, I had Bernie Borges on my show and he, you know, he talks Love about Bernie. amazing. And I was on his show and what we realize now is whether you, you know, he doesn't like the idea of life begins at and midlife, you know, this concept of 50 being your midlife. But but right now we are in the prime of our lives. There's there's enough time to realize your dreams and to your point to even maximize those dreams by waiting a little longer and not knocking the day job, right? And not knocking uh, the real income, which, which again, if someone had told me that a lot earlier, maybe my mother did tell me that. She'll correct me and tell me. Get a, she told me to become an accountant. No, she didn't. But, you know, accountants, uh, 
Right now, there's a lot of them, but a really good one in the United States, if you want like accounting, become an enrolled agent. That's not as tedious an education to become an enrolled agent and you can make silos of money and or, it's fun. <laughs> or become an accountant in the metaverse and, you know, and, and become the de facto expert in Web3. That's got to be interesting. Lots of taxable moments happening. I mean, these days it's more like capital losses, but that's another story for another day. Well, just so you know, in the US, one of the reasons I don't jump into anything unless I really understand it. And I understand the only thing I do understand is at the front page of the United States tax return, the annual tax return, there was a little eight point line of text right at the very part, the top. It said, do you own or have you own uh, transacted in any cryptocurrency? Check here. That's it. Uh, call me a conspiracy theorist, but I, I just saw this was a trap for the future. So I decided to wait out and I want to see how things roll out. Because let's face it, the blockchain is the blockchain. Anybody can look at the blockchain. Right. So you're not going to hide. And you just, nothing's going to be hidden. You know, you can fool yourself. But the truth is, if somebody wants to find out what you're doing, they can find out what you're doing. So I'm going to do um, yes. And you talk about analog money, cash. Talk, think about the underbanked. Think about how we have this entire world of people who don't have bank accounts. In the United States, it's a very large percentage. And they cannot transact in many ways. So when you're talking about high tech and we're talking about cryptocurrency and all that, there are people who can't even buy with a credit card or a debit card. And we need to democratize the basics of the economy before we can honestly expect to go any further or we're going to divide the country into a caste system. And it's just not right. Well, I think it's, I mean, it's changing in so many ways. Even, you know, even going, for example, I'm a huge uh, football fan, as in the round football right, soccer. Right, right, I know that. And, and when I go to, you know, Tottenham Hotspur's stadium, the whole the stadium is cashless. Oh, you're a Spurs fan too? Wait a minute, are you in the UK? No, I'm in South Africa now, but I live in the US. But... Yeah, my family lives in the UK. I go there a couple times a year, so. <laughs> but, but the whole stadium is cashless, cashless. No, it's it's amazing when you actually go to an entire installation institution and there's no notes and no coins and everything is now and 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 people have to realize that what you know what plastic was to cashless <coughs> apps are to plastic and crypto is to apps and and so you you it, it's it, and it's it's turning and it's turning and it's turning but i think what you're saying which is so important uh, is democratization, leveling of the playing fields. By the way, Shalom is in Denmark, uh, and he said we're both welcome to come and visit. I was in Copenhagen I'm earlier. Ready. If I'd if I'd known, I'm you ready. A little, little bit of Tivoli Garden. I I love Copenhagen. Well, you know, when we're talking about this, it's just not the underbanked. I mean, we live in a world of privilege. I mean, yeah. let's face it, Elon is almost an oligarch. But let's call it what it is. Um, you, there are rich people, there are wealthy people, but we still have a lot of the poor people. Now, I love shopping at Amazon Fresh, where the shopping cart reads the items, totals up the bill, shows me, I have a little screen on it. Love shopping there. That's a lot of fun. But it, it's a privilege. You don't see anybody who is needy shopping at an Amazon Fresh. And right now we've got a world full of homeless people and people living in the streets. And we really need to put together a niche for them, not even a niche. There has to be some way we take care of this because that will be the downfall of everything if we're weighted down by 
having to take care of people. It's all about education. It's all about mental health. It's all about housing. I realize this isn't about the, what I'm saying isn't about tech, but it's important for tech to succeed, for tech to really enhance everybody's life. I mean, there are people who can't afford a Tesla battery in their garage. They can't afford solar cells on their house. Uh, it's difficult for a lot of people in the world to have the current tech, which again is why I wrote on Android instead of iPhone. Yeah, but, I, but it's the people's phone. I, I want to go back to Elon for a second because just today I was actually chatting with my mom, and I said, you know, Elon was was uh, um, I think he had to pay a penalty uh, of a billion dollars based on the public announcement and the and and him not following through. A billion dollars. I, I am in in a country right now. Today we have rolling blackouts called load shedding. See? There, were, See? there was there was there was no power, no power from 6 to 8:30, from 2 to 4:30 and then from 10 until 12:30 a.m. three times today. And I think to myself the people that are living in townships and shanty towns and 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 you know No, wait a minute. Discussing... Houston, Texas right now is going through the same thing. So it's not just shanty towns. And, well, and this is Africa, and, and 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 that's. I was thinking first of all, what if Elon had just donated a billion dollars to not only help, and and there's a huge problem here with squatters as well, homeless, and 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 the thing is, like, I agree with you, but I want to double down on that, which is to say, what are we doing here when we're when we're? And I understood we never we never resolved what you were talking about, because then I, I kind of tangented us with Star Trek. But we never, res with Will Wheaton, I, you see, I'm like, <laughs> I still remember it. I'm we not sure why I blocked you. For several shows, you know. In this How do we fix it? How do we fix it? Why are people like Elon Musk uh, running? Or, is, it, is it his job to save the global <clears throat> public square? Or could he be putting his billions of dollars to better use, including, but not mm -hmm. limited to, shareholder value because the share the the shares of tesla have plummeted what the hell is going on well you know the, you've brought up a ton of different topics let's just talk about the power grid for a moment yes let's get back to twitter real quick um elon wants to open up freedom of speech to me freedom of speech is always good i doubt he's ever going to pay the billion dollars he may i've read the legal briefs on both sides Again, I learn before I open my mouth. And, and I really think that even though the media was spouting it was all about bots, no, it was about he wanted to know about spammers and fake accounts. And the media did not know that spammers and fake accounts are different than bots. So the whole story got twisted in the media. So it will be fascinating to see it roll out. But looking at, at your idea from Elon's point of view, the man's a capitalist. We'll give him that, okay? He can donate plenty of money and has. But let's say he wanted to invest in a power grid in South Africa to help people. That's a capitalistic way that he can do good that will make him happy, maybe make him a profit. And do good for so many people. There needs to be a balance. The elite can't possibly run the world. They have to participate in investing in infrastructure. Just like Mark Cuban, I don't know if you know, he has a website called Cost Plus Drugs. It's a pharmacy. They buy direct from manufacturers and they undercut the pricing of anybody in the United States. If you didn't know about it, folks, if you need a drug, he's growing the list of drugs as it goes, hmm. but go over there and take a look. I mean, I know what I pay for insurance for like one of my drugs. It was on his website for $3 and 60 cents for a month's worth. I mean, that is incredible. That's investing money for good. And I think we need absolutely more of that. So, Elon's got an ego. Elon is a genius. I mean, let's, we can't deny that. And he's a little ADHD. And, and by the way, by the way, 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyone watching tonight? Um, but but investing money for good, besides saving the power grid in South Africa, could also benefit him, not only just in terms of return on investment, but in terms of laying out an electric grid and, and charging stations for South Africa to potentially become the leading country in the world in terms of adoption of electric vehicles. So, well, so absolutely. I, and there's the question also, because I am an environmentalist. I, I don't let these things out. You're pulling out things that I don't normally talk about. But the recycling of solar cells, batteries, you have to think about that. We have those weren't that wasn't thought through very deeply. And remember that whatever we're buying now is really the beta version. We haven't gotten to the second edition of anything which means it you are being testing products for manufacturers when you buy them which you know uh, true that's nice but you just can't expect everything to be perfect and just like whole other discussion um when startups don't put security first power uh, companies uh clean energy companies are not putting recycling the environment first and that's so very important because we have a world a beautiful world and we don't want to trash it up with even worse trash that we don't know what kind of damage it's going to make yeah it's so true now marshall we have we have as a little bit of time left and i i want to i you know what i find what i love about this uh, tonight or today because it's today in in America land, uh, but it's tonight in South Africa land, is that you are known amongst many things. We've discussed a lot of technology, but really this incredible, um, you know, 13 years running uh, chat on Twitter, customer service, you're known for having this incredible lens and, and, and handle on that. And I always find quotes for my guests. This is the quote that I found uh, for you uh, tonight uh, or today. Customer service is part of a holistic customer experience that is capable of providing a critical competitive advantage in today's increasingly cluttered and commoditized marketplace. This is I not necessarily that, that, that's really cool. No, you no, you actually didn't say it. I said it. Okay, um, but, that's very cool, Joseph. But the fact that you thought that you said it. No, actually, it's the first time I've actually gone to a website to look for a quote. And I'm going down and I saw someone had quoted me. I always go to these websites and I go, why the hell am I not being quoted? Like, you know, I see Marsha Collier is quoted, Jay Bear is quoted, David Mirman Scott is quoted, Mitch Joel is, you know, Brian Solis, all of these hacks. Where's my quote? Well, this is the first time I found myself. But en <laughs> enough about that. It's not even one of my better ones. Let's talk about, uh, about customer service. Let's talk about customer service in Web3. I just want to get your take on where, how... <laughs> How how far have we devolved from where from this ideal or utopia where we can actually treat people the way that we would expect to be treated in return? We have devolved so badly. Did you know that Heathrow Airport has told airlines to stop selling tickets for the summer? That they only want to run 100,000 people through the airport each day. They do not have the staff to take care of people. I read an article this morning about somebody who had an $11,000 ticket to go somewhere on an airline. Uh, excuse me. The airline was offering $11,000 for paid customers to get off the plane because the plane was too heavy. And then they lost his bag. I mean, th th these instances are, 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 are egre egregious. And the hospitality industry the tech industry. Try to get help on Facebook or Meta. I mean, really, try yeah. to get help anywhere. Now, bots are great as an introduction, maybe to kind of like a phone tree. Okay, let's let's look at a bot as a phone tree. It helps isolate what the customer needs. But then we need to connect to a person. And unfortunately, when you're talking about personal information, Sometimes you may feel uncomfortable 
if you get someone from another com country who's going to see your credit card information, who's going to see very confidential information about you. We really need to circle the wagons again because customer service is about people and people are the ones who are your data points for your business and they are the ones that pay the bills of the company. So if we can't have a human to human relationship with our customers, it's going to get bad. It's going to get yeah. bad. It's going to be Walmart I mean, for all. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's 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 music to my ears. It's so important. Just today, I, I, I was in a clubhouse room and I spoke about accountability, accountability from a founder of, a, of an NFT project or a, or a Discord community to its members, but also members to the founder. That, that accountability works two ways. And I actually spoke about how, look, response in real time within seconds is unrealistic and quite frankly, oftentimes people can probably sort out the problems themselves, right? right. But, the, but the opposite end of the continuum is as bad, if not worse. Your call is important to us and will be answered in, in the order of, uh, it was received due to an unusually long, you know, or uh, unexpected irate customers. You are number 655 in line uh, and someone can call you back in. An, uh, that's such bullshit. And then you look at these IVR, press one, press two, press three and FAQs. And not being so somewhere in the middle is a sweet spot. It's not well, that hard. I have to tell you that every organization, business, group, whatever, needs an FAQ page. And you, you just kind of toss them aside. But if we could train people to actually read them, where when you get a new question as the central person in the group or the person responsible for the group, add that question and the answer to the FAQ. Your FAQ can be really long. You know, it's just a simple control F for however you do it on your device to find the question that people have. Give the answers available in an available spot for anybody to see. That's yeah. not hard. People don't want to talk to you. They really don't want to talk to you. They'd really rather get the information themselves. There, there is definitely a, uh, a, a business opportunity in there for humanization of FAQs. But Marsha, you know, our our time is almost coming to an end. And I know it is a it is a travesty and a tragedy. We need uh, to do this again. Really. We we will, but I have to now turn it over to our uh, our hump day, our wellness Wednesday correspondent, uh Whitney Lauritsen, uh, who sent in this report uh today. It's summertime, at least in, in the United States, and I often think about what it felt like to experience summer when I was a kid and how great it felt to be out of school for a few months and on vacation and do fun things with my friends and family. Now as an adult, I feel like I have to generate some of that excitement and try harder. It doesn't come as naturally. I can find myself just going through the flow business as usual, especially because I don't have children. So I don't get those reminders unless I'm seeing people's posts on social media or videos. So today my tip for you is to generate that summer fun that you recall from your childhood. Even if it's not summer right now, if you're in a different part of the world, you can still do this. Can you step outside of your day-to-day -day life and just do something that brings you joy. Do something that you loved as a child. Can you spend some more time outside? Can you go for a walk or a swim somewhere? Is there a pool in your backyard? If not, could you get a blow up pool? These are really popular right now. Even like a little kiddie pool to feel like a kid again uh, or to a gym or a public place with a pool. Uh, can you go on a mini vacation or a day trip somewhere? Is there a beach, a lake, someplace nearby, a water source that often generates a feeling of summer 
maybe taking the time to read a book or do a arts and craft project, a hobby that you love, something that puts you back in that childhood state of wonder. And if you do have children in your life, sometimes just spending time with them, bringing them to an amusement park, a water park. I used to love that when I was a kid, going to do something out of the ordinary together to experience the joy alongside them. And again, you do not have to have kids to do this. You can either tag along with some uh, friends or family members that have kids or just go, go do this stuff where kids are. People love Disney World and Disneyland for this reason. It's tapping in to those feelings, those core memories, which still feel really good to us as adults. And if we don't take the time to do them regularly, we kind of get out of touch with that. So go find something to do. If you can do it today, that's even better. Well, I'll, I, this is the, I, I am I am devastated to have to say goodbye to you, uh, but I won't. I will just say adieu until we meet again. Uh, this has been Marsha Collier, author, tech podcast host, influencer of humans, guest number three hundred eighty-five, and my best guest to date. Uh, if you want to follow Marsha, she leads you to the promised land. You can follow her on Twitter on Instagram. And I actually answer DMs on Twitter. So if you want to talk she's, to me, she's me the one. LinkedIn, uh, if you are an Android smartphone user and you embrace the term dummy because you're still learning and you're senior, maybe not in age, but in stature, you have silver hair or any other color hair or no hair, it doesn't matter. Buy the book, subscribe to her tech podcast, Computer, and technology radio and nerdorama news because there's all uh, we all have a little bit of nerd in us uh marcia uh, i hope you ended up uh in a good place tonight uh, you sent me a, a a private message saying keep up the positivity that's the idea of the show hope positivity and optimism hbo as my mother calls it oh i like it your mother's a very smart lady everybody stay positive have an amazing week Joseph, you're going to be back real soon for them to get another dose of Joseph Jaffe. And keep smiling, keep positive, and think of new things. Well, you, you have a new fan. Uh, Shalom says she is a wonderful uh, soul. Um, thank you, Shah. And Yes, thank you, Shah. And finally, you have another fan in Chuck Norris. You are Chuck Norris approved. And I will be back next week, back in the USA. Take care, everyone. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you for watching the show about hope, positivity, optimism, and if there's time left over, a little bit of marketing with your host, multiple author, and global keynote speaker, Joseph Jaffe. If you like the show, tell a friend or two. Please subscribe to the show. And if you want to get inside news, previews of upcoming guests, and much more, visit josephjaffe.com slash subscribe to sign up for the show's newsletter. And despite the best ministrations of your wife, you still look ugly. <laughs> <laughs>